Hello everyone, this is a no damage playthrough of Resident Evil 3 Remake on Hardcore Difficulty. This pandemic has spread faster than any disease in modern history. Angry mobs run the city, burning buildings. Authorities are bracing for more rioting tonight. There are fires burning, there are people being... He was knocked out conscious, he had some rioting. A citywide emergency has been declared. The CDC has quarantined the lower Midwestern Officials region of the can't U.S. Say. Commitment, honesty, integrity, these are the core values that create the foundation for Umbrella. It's this foundation that will continue to build a brighter future for all of us. So my usual bunch of disclaimers are not going to be at the beginning of the video because I wanted to get this video out as quickly as possible. A no commentary version of this run will be in the pinned comment in the comment section below. This is from a fresh save, no new game plus weapons, and the whole purpose is just to show how to beat the game on hardcore mode. As you can already see, I'm wearing Jill's original RE1 Stars outfit. You get that for beating the game, and her RE3 costume, her RE3 Classic costume, is a pre-order bonus. Who could that be? Hello? Jill! Are, are you okay? Brad, is that you? Listen, you gotta get out of there! What are you talking about? I don't have time to explain. You gotta get out of there right now! All right, let me grab my... Ah!
coming. Also, none of this counts as damage, it's all cutscenes. Okay. Cutscenes are not damage. Yeah. I know, but right now it's got a hard on for the only two stars left in town, you and me. I'm not sticking around. Just look around you. The longer we wait, the more screwed we are. How did this all happen so fast? I don't know. One fucked up thing always leads to another. It's like Arclay on steroids. See Nemesis capsule right there. We've gotta be dreaming. How could this many people be infected? Brad! Here they come! In here! There's so many. Sometimes it's possible for one of those zombies to just like spring onto you and kill you instantly. It's kind of dumb. Door behind you, go! Don't think about it. We're gonna make a run for it. Come on, Jill. We know how this ends. No, I don't. Are we still a team? Always. Then do me a favor. Don't fuck up like I do. Go! That zombie can just be straight up ignored. Even though the game wants you to use it for a little bit of target practice. The whole first 20 minutes or so is just one scripted walking talking sequence. Isn't far, I can the only safe place is in here. If you 
keep talking to Dario while he's closed up in his trailer. You'll actually get an achievement out of it. Once you exhaust all of his dialogue. Dario Rosso, social distancing king. So you can either shoot that zombie in the face or in the leg to stun him and then run around him. It's the best way to get back to the elevator is just beat them out a little bit and do that. Fun fact, this is actually Ethan's car from RE7, except repainted. I got you. Who are you? What are you doing? Name's Carlos, and I'm saving you. Come on, let's get you someplace safe. I think we're in the clear. Hope so. We've been bringing survivors here. Here where? My guys have converted some subway cars into a shelter. It's safe. I'm fine. Personal space. Okay, I get it. Let's go. Oh, come on. Who's the dipshit that closed this? Sorry, we're gonna have to go around. Hey, what do you know about that monster? Nothing. I've never seen anything like it. But it's no zombie. It knows what it wants and won't stop till it gets it. Don't you like that in a man? No thanks. He's all yours. I promise you're in good hands. I'm with the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service. UBCS for short. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? You guys are the ones who caused all of this. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about? Look, you don't have to trust me, but I'm going to the shelter. You coming? Come on, it's this way. Captain, this fine young lady could use our help. Carlos, you didn't even think to ask fine young lady her name? She is an elite operative of 
RPD, Special Tactics and Rescue Service. Her name is something Valentine. It's Jill. Nice to meet you, Jill. I am UBCS, Platoon Leader Mikhail Viktor. My team was sent here to rescue civilians. Right. How's that going for you? The city is completely cut off, isolated. Most of the 100,000 civilians will wind up dead. Uh, correction, undead. My platoon has suffered serious losses. Just keeping them alive is more than I can manage. Well, you can thank your corporate overlords for that. Yes. Well, we are doing all we can. If we can get this subway train moving, we can evacuate some survivors. But we need help. My men cannot do this alone. I'm in. But I am on their side, not yours. Oh, hey. It's cool. We all want the same thing. Thank you, Joe. All right, super cop. Here you go. We can use this to stay in contact. I know what a radio is. Okay, first things first. We need to get you geared up. Head up to street level. You'll find supplies there. All right. By the way, thank you very much to Capcom for supplying me with an early access copy of the game. Jill, it's me again. You topside yet? Working on it. So what's the plan? The old tanks got me clearing the tracks. You might get in the subway infrastructure back online. And how do I do that? Let's start by restoring power. I'll navigate you to the substation once you hit the main road. Copy that. Let's do this fast. So we'll start out by grabbing these two gunpowders. Everything else in front of us is all healing items. It's a single green herb and... Sorry, two green herbs and a red herb. More survivors. We've got to get that train moving. So to go into a little bit of detail on the uh, difficulty levels in this game, uh, Hardcore is roughly DA8 or DA9, if you're familiar with difficulty adjustment as it appears in Resident Evil 2 Remake. So like uh, difficulty adjustment, in other words, like the hidden difficulty adjust values that uh, dictate how enemies are going to behave. Um, for these first two zombies over here, like. Don't do what I did for the first zombie that I just dodged and he just like came after me. Like bait him out a little bit, then run after him. And for these zombies in the alley, we want to knock both of them down and run around them. I got lucky and decapitated one. The zombies do double lunge on this difficulty. Carlos, I've reached the main avenue. Which way do I go? See a big transmission tower? That's the substation. You have to circle around through an alley to your right to get there. You mean the alley that's on fire? Maybe. Surely a tall drink of water like yourself can put out a few flames. Fuck you. There's two harder difficulties after hardcore difficulty, uh, Nightmare and Inferno. I'm expecting that the next video I upload will be on Inferno difficulty. No idea when I'll get an S rank, no damage playthrough, but that's the goal that I'm working up towards. After playing uh, Nightmare Difficulty, I am very certain that a Nightmare or Inferno, no save, no damage run, is probably not going to be possible, at least not without New Game Plus items. So after running around those uh, first three zombies, we can just run down the stairs and then up and then back into the alleyway. The uh, code to the safe is 918. If you played the demo a bunch, then you know what this you know what's going on here. But anyway, we got the uh, the red dot sight, and uh, it's for the G 
18 handgun. I'd probably say that this uh, that this plus the uh, extended magazine are probably the only upgrades that are really like especially good for the gun. The suppressor I haven't really found a use for other than maybe to fight liquors. But as far as I'm aware, Jill doesn't even fight a single liquor, so. Yeah, spoiler alert. Sorry about that. Um, in order to uh, get into the pharmacy, we have to run behind this guy because he's a landmine zombie. He's going to lunge at you. And then we can pick up the high-grade gunpowder and uh, handgun bullets. So in Resident Evil 3 Remake, uh, the item pickups function kind of similar to Resident Evil 7 where you just press F and it picks up and it just goes directly into your inventory. So we got that to watch out for too. In general, the uh, best way to deal with stunning zombies so you can run past them is to try to shoot them in the head as many times as you can and hope that they stun enough for you to run around them. When we go into the Kite Bros Railway uh, office, we grab the uh, fire hose here so that we can put out the fire in the alley. And we're going to go exactly the way we came because there's nothing else that we can really do in the area aside from pick up some items, but we're uh, going to go pick up a couple of key items that'll let us explore the rest of the area, especially before we have our next encounter with Nemesis. I just go ahead and blow up this barrel on all difficulties because it just clears out these two zombies over here and allows us an easy access from one side of the map to the other Gotta put this out. so that we deal with as few enemies as we absolutely have to. Our goal at the moment is to try to get the shotgun and get as many shotgun shells as possible this early on. So we got one of these two items that we need, the bolt cutters. Can you be CS? Yeah, careful, careful. Come on, don't look at me like that, alright? I'm not an infected. Okay, no, 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 wait, please! <gasps> what the fuck? He was infected. He might have been infected. Oh, stars this soft. I wonder so many of you dead. And what are you, UBCS, killing your own people? He would have turned. There's your sense of self-preservation. Go back to the subway station. We don't need a bleeding heart like you getting in the way. Man, Nikolai is such a fucking psycho. You just watch that and you just think, God, I hate him already. So when you hear the, uh, the howling, we want to wait for the dog to come around the corner here. Basically get as close as he can to getting in the way of you and that generator there. Then we pop the generator and electrocute them both stun them so that we can start shooting them. And when we do that, we have a clean break over to the substation. So in general, I, I might either go for legs or headshots, depending. But my uh, general habit was to go for the uh, was to go for the leg shots until now. Had a bit of an unfortunate uh, mess up with that second uh, female zombie right there. I was actually supposed to bait her back a little further and shoot her in the head so that I could skip around her and basically try to skip around all three of these zombies. Because when we get the lockpick here, we're going to despawn all of them going back. 
Oh, I don't even want to think about it. Picking up a green herb. Carsey, why are you doing that? So that cutscene right there is force damage, getting bugs shoved down your throat just to show off a mechanic. Of course that doesn't count, so. Gonna move right along. Inside the locker. Plenty of goodies. And now because we got the lockpick and the bolt cutters, we're going to run all the way back and unlock a lot of ammo cache caches. There's a first aid spray in that locker. I'm still going to open all of the uh, lock pick uh, padlocks just to show where they are for the purpose of getting the master of unlocking achievement. Still skating on by that zombie that I uh, that I just went right by. It's better to just straight up shoot him. By the way, so in the bonus menu when you beat the game, you can spend points on just buying the bolt cutter and the lockpick. Really, it's a it's pretty inconsequential. That uh, the lockpick is available earlier. I'm not really sure that it would affect your rank to have those in your in, in your item box either, but you know, I think I I think for the for the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna prob probably use the unlockable bolt cutters and lockpick in the future. Going back into the railway station, there's another fast in the padlock the padlocked locker. Shotgun behind the chains. Now we can use the uh, bolt cutter over here in order to get into this alleyway. While this guy is getting up, we're going to go ahead and blow his head off with a shotgun, and we're going to try to wait for all three of these zombies to come close to the barrel. Then there's handgun bullets, a hand grenade, and some shotgun shells. 
We're going to save all of our hand grenades because all of our hand grenades actually have a very specific purpose. In hardcore mode, we can ignore this zombie over here. Gunpowder and handgun rounds in the donut shop. And behind this padlocked... Uh, Behind this padlock over here is a hand grenade. And we also have a fancy box. I'm going to combine this gunpowder over here just to get as many handgun bullets as we can. Because we are going to be using a lot of handgun bullets very soon. We'll drop off the hand grenade, the knife, and then we'll pick up the fancy box. The fancy box is... requisite for the uh, gem puzzle as they all contain gems. That zombie was a little too close to the gunpowder that I wanted to get, so I just decided to blow his head off. But I'm kind of considering maybe skipping that gunpowder in the future. I don't know. It just doesn't really seem worth it to go back out that way. The crates there from Resident Evil 7 also make a reappearance, and they all contain, like, randomized supplies. Usually green herb, uh, red herb, handgun ammo, shotgun ammo, but that's really about it. Maybe some gunpowders. You won't find any high-grade gunpowders in there, though. Maybe enough gunpowder to, like... Mix up with like a stray high grade that you might have in your inventory or just to get some more handgun bullets, whichever. Kind of an oh, I needed that situation. When we use the bolt cutters to get into the grocery store back there, there's another fancy box and a high grade gunpowder, which I use to make shotgun shells. Another fancy box here, and now we've got all three fancy boxes. We can run back to the subway station. First grab these, this handgun ammo here. And those zombies are already taken care of quite nicely. Let's give me another zombie here and go ahead and do him in. Now, because I don't know how much HP each of these zombies has, I always like to poke the zombies with handgun bullets a couple of times. If I got a knife in my inventory, then I'll try to stab them in the head. I'm not necessarily sure that stabbing in the head does more damage, but it'll probably inflict more stun appropriately. When you put in a gym, when you put in a gym the first time, you get a grenade. The second time you put in a gym, you'll get the tactical stock for the shotgun, which, uh, by the way, does not uh, increase your ammo count. And the third gym you put in will get you a side pack, a hip pouch. And after unlocking this padlock over here to get into this case. Actually, there was one more uh, chest that I did not open. It was in the Kite Bros Railway Station next to the puzzle that we would have to solve after the substation. guys this way so that I can scoot around them. But that last padlock at the Kite Bros Railway Station had some shotgun shells. I'll make sure to pick that up in the next run. So at this point you should have over 20 shotgun shells in reserve. Not including the four in your shotgun and about 70 handgun bullets. 
because this section over here, where we have to fight our way through all these drain demos, requires us to stand our ground and try to shoot every single one of them, because the drain demos are hard as fuck to dodge. I still put away the lockpick anyway. And I took two hand grenades with me. I don't believe there was much of a reason for me to take two hand grenades. I guess just in case the uh, barrel strategy that I would be using later failed. But now that we have everything all set, we're ready to save our game and then go into the power station. I start by shooting that Drain Demos out there, and if we fail to kill him, then he'll usually be wandering down that hallway, and I just, like, kind of check down that way. Just kind of corner camp, check down that way, and just, uh, try to shoot all of them. They take about, they take about three handgun shots each to get rid of. So two are gotten rid of, a third was still wandering around. You could wait for the third if you want, but every time we uh, pull the handle, there's always going to be more Drain Demos that spawn if they're not coming out of the buttholes on the wall. But for now, the goal is to try to shoot all of them. At least all the ones that are on the map for the time being. And when the music calms down... Like, you'll know it when you see it. It'll, it'll hit you like a truck. Then you can climb up the ladder and move on. There's actually a file right there that I that I had never even noticed. Until a little while ago. Drain Demos are coming out of the wall here again after we pull the thing. I believe if they come out of the uh, buttholes in the wall, it's it's a timed thing. But it usually syncs up to around the point where I pull that handle anyhow. Usually there's an enemy above or below whenever I round that corner, so I just check. And then I popped the generator there to kill a Drain Demos that was hiding around the corner. The music calmed down, so it means that I killed something and that I was free to flip the next switch. And we're at three out of four switches done. If you're having trouble seeing Drain Demos, you can generally try to flip the switches and the Drain Demos will try to come after you. Like, they'll try to come after you and when you, whenever you hear the skittering, that's when you stop flipping the switch, switch to the shotgun and kill them. I haven't had to do that in this attempt so far, but I'll definitely point it out when I see it, if I do. The music was still going, which meant that several were on the field, so I decided to take a risk there. And I knew that there was going to be one coming out of there as soon as I pulled the fourth switch. I actually got lucky with that one. I just heard him skittering and I didn't see him in front of him, so I just like aimed to the ceiling immediately. And then I always look to the left when rounding that corner because there's one, sometimes two drain demos just camping there. Okay. All that leaves is the main power switch. Now that we're done. Enjoy that. Sucks that it doesn't actually kill all the Drain Demos. That would have been lovely. In case you're wondering about the coins in my item box, uh, they were unlockables. Carlos, it's Jill. I've restored power to the subway. Nice going. Next up is the traffic control system. It should be in the subway company's offices. Unfortunately, all I can tell you is that it's somewhere in the area. You don't even know what building? 
that's helpful. Thanks, partner. I try. Not your partner. So when we come out the gate here, Nemesis is going to bust out the wall again. Are you shitting me? We just take a wide angle around this dumpster, and Nemesis will try to do a left hook and miss. Then we'll aim at the generator, zap him, and he'll be stunned for about 10 seconds. Then we headshot that female zombie there and head straight for the door here. Carlos! That thing is still alive! It's after me! What? Run! Come back to the station! Not until I get traffic control online. So next up, we're going to get down on the pavement. Nemesis is going to bust down in front of us. Then we're going to aim at the barrel, and he'll take three steps. And after he takes three steps, that's when we pop the barrel, and he will drop a supply case. Nemesis has four drops, uh, the first two of which are upgrades for the handgun. I would, say the, uh, I would say the first drop is like the only really particularly good upgrade that Nemesis drops. Everything else is ammo. And we're going to have that in excess, generally. But the reason I take down Nemesis here is so that he's not hot on my ass while I'm trying to go directly to the Kite Bros Railway. I also needed to decapitate this guy anyway, which I should have done while I had the handgun. Control room. Now what? Nice. Now you gotta plot out a room. Okay, give me a sec. Actually, it should be noted. All right. Where are we headed? The train is stopped at Redstone Street. We need to reach Fox Park Station. Can you program that in? Hey, I'm Super Cop. Consider it done. Valid route confirmed. Carlos, it's me. I finished him putting the subway roof. Chill, you are amazing. Tough as nails, too. Hurry back to the station. We'll make sure the subway's ready to depart. It should be noted that uh, if you use a, a clip upgrade on a gun, it will actually replenish your ammo to full. The best thing to do is to take the shotgun and decapitate that uh, tentacle zombie and then what I do after that is I back up so that the zombies return to their tether In general, we just don't fuck around with the tentacle zombies because the tentacle zombies, as soon as we hear like the, the chittering before the tentacle swing, it's basically always going to hit us unless we do a perfect dodge. And the timing windows for perfect dodges are way too thin to be able to reliably get around it. So we hear Nemesis theme, we shoot the zombie, and then we wait for Nemesis to come up the stairs. The reason why I took that alleyway upstairs was because if I went down and through the donut shop, then Nemesis would have spawned another tentacle zombie in front of us, and it would have been really awkward to get him out of the way. But specifically, I needed an easier setup to be able to uh, take him down that time. And a single grenade or barrel is enough to do a hard knockdown which will get him to give us his item as well. But yeah, the range on those tentacles is ridiculous. So just like, don't fuck around with them. Just kill them.
Also, that last zombie on the way down into the shutter. If you if you if you trigger the cutscene, then the zombie will not be able to get nice you. Nice job, Super Cop. I'm impressed. We back in business? Yeah, mostly. But we need 30 to 40 minutes to finish maintenance. Nikolai, how are we doing? The town's crawling with those freaks. No chance of fighting our way out of the city. Why is she here? She's helping get the trains running again. Bad time to start getting dead weight for it. She's unreliable. Can't pull the trigger when it counts. Hey, take it easy. She'll get you killed. Sorry about that. Everyone's a little worked up. Oh, come on. Not again. It's me he's after. Hey. I'll buy you some time. Hey, wait. Wait, Joe. No! Damn it. Come on, you creepy ass stalker. You want stars? I'll give you stars. So we take these tight lines over here and then. Get ready to aim at the generator and stun him. And then after we do that, we're going to make our way into the storage area over here, grab these handgun bullets, and then we're going to chill out in this corner over here until Nemesis commits to following us next to these barrels. Gotta stay kind of close. And then after that, he drops it again. Uh, I should let you know, though, that these instant takedowns that I've been doing on Nemesis only work up to hardcore difficulty. On Nightmare and above, it does not work. A completely different set of strategies need to happen for Nightmare and Inferno difficulty. Upon reaching the sewers, we can open the locker. There's handgun bullets and shotgun shells in there. And we need one grenade. For the uh, enemies coming up next. Oh, God. I'm definitely burning these clothes. There's another grenade sitting in the garbage here. By the way, in case people are wondering about my brightness, I keep my brightness high because I like to be able to see things. And I also don't use V-Sync because V-Sync introduces input lag. Anyway, gonna throw this grenade. And uh, grenade will uh, take down most of his health. The Hunter Gammas are generally weak whenever they uh, reveal their mandibles like that. Stock all my grenades in my inventory there. Probably shouldn't even have all those grenades. Oh yeah, this is the one where I actually had to backtrack because I missed that gunpowder just staring me right in the face. I'll give past Carsey a break. It's a new game. So, the Hunter Gammas are weak against incendiary rounds. In hardcore difficulty, you might need to follow up with an extra shot or two. There's some shotgun shells at the end of this uh, little hidden path over here. 
as well as uh, something in the box, but I got the first aid spray there. Also to examine these boxes over here. Gave us uh, the silencer and the shotgun shells, but like I said, the silencer is kind of useless. If this first grenade does not finish off the enemy, then we're going to follow up with a shotgun shell or a handgun bullet, but generally a shotgun shell is probably a better idea as a handgun bullet does not always finish the job. As far as I'm aware, the silencer is useless, but if I'm wrong, please correct me. Combining more shotgun shells here, and we're going to use the lockpick to get into this locker over here, get some explosive A, and that's when I realized that I didn't have the explosive B. So we had to run all the way back. And that laboratory, though, is the uh, key item that is requisite to get out of this area, which is a battery. So in Resident Evil 3 Remake, uh, on top of the gunpowders that you normally get, which is uh, regular gunpowder and high-grade gunpowder, you also get explosive powder. So if you combine A and B, you get flame rounds. If you combine A and A, you get uh, you get explosive rounds. If you combine B and B, then you get acid rounds. You cannot make mine thrower rounds though. You have to pick those up. Mine thrower rounds are basically uh, explosive rounds with a straighter trajectory and the ability to detonate on proximity. They have about the same damage as explosive rounds as far as I'm aware. But this is information that I have figured out as of the release of the game. And I'm sure that uh, anything I know will probably, I would say about, I would say about maybe like 30% of the stuff that I know about this game will probably be rendered completely wrong in about a week's time after I have access to the SRT. But again, dealing with gammas, swap out for shotgun after an incendiary round, after they open their mandibles. They're on fire, sometimes they'll die, sometimes they won't. If the aggravated damage saps up the rest of their HP. SRT meaning speedrunning tool. It is a program that allows you to hook into the PC version's memory and be able to view enemy HP in real time as well as player HP, uh, the game timer, stuff like that. It was made by a guy named Squirrelies. Also difficulty adjustment, it shows difficulty adjustment values as well. The DA values.
that's the last gamma that we had to deal with down here. hip pouch here. There's an explosive and another gunpowder. The gun, the explosive A is actually going to be used to mix up some grenade rounds for the next boss fight coming up. But we've gotten everything that there is to get in the sewers under downtown Raccoon City. But yeah, the SRT is a very, very Carlos, handy tool. Can you hear me now? Jill. Oh, thank God. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm alive. I lost him. Great. The subway's ready to go. We'll leave as soon as you make it back. So we just uh, take a wide angle to get around these guys. You can use weapons. Before we head upstairs, we're gonna duck into this room and grab the explosive A. Combine those in order to get three explosive rounds. Then we're going to get to the top of this building and save the game. Crafting companion there is an unlockable item as well. <laughs> so now we're getting ready, loading up the explosive rounds into the grenade launcher, then making our fourth save. In case you guys haven't figured out, well, why do you reload after you save your game? That's a question that I get on like every video <laughs> that I do a segmented run on. And the reason for that is if I take a hit during a segment, I can reload the segment and try again. That's what segmented means. All right, let's do this. And especially in a new game like this, I mean, I kind of have to do segmented in order to learn this game. So anyway, we get uh, we get four more explosive rounds from the chest over there. We gotta wait for Nemesis to stop flaming. Then pick up the uh, shotgun shells here. And we're taking advantage of our hit stun here. This is not Jill taking damage, by the way. 
the uh, the blast actually causes Jill to like wince over a little bit, and it actually allows her to fire the grenade launcher a little faster. So after uh, five shots to the tank on the back, we're gonna throw our grenade. And then we're going to unload our shotgun into his heart four times. And then he's going to charge. Then he's gonna miss. And we're gonna throw another grenade. And then equip our grenade launcher. And then two shots. And he's down. Carlos? It's Jill. Do you read me? Loud and clear. You all right? Yeah. Bastard's dead. Good. Fuck him. What were you thinking? Turning yourself into bait. You could have been killed. Don't start. I did what I had to. I know. And thanks. The subway's ready to go. Hurry back. So upon climbing this fire truck here, we're coming to a very familiar area. Up to hardcore difficulty, you don't actually have to kill any of these zombies. I mean, really, you don't have to kill anything. Killing is just a suggestion. But uh, right about here, it is also very passive to not kill anything. When we go towards the RPD garage, we can grab the high-grade gunpowder, then make our way out. Get around all these other guys here. Also, I am not going to take this route anymore. Not this, not this path. I'm going around the Bronco next time. Got the explosive B, then. Semi-auto barrel for the shotgun. We'll combine that with the M3. And now we have a an almost fully upgraded M3. We're going to combine the B with the explosive A to make more flame rounds for the next boss fight coming up. Dabu! Shit, Jill! Kendo, you're all right. You're all, all right to stretch. Sorry, I got a little jumpy there. Didn't know quite what to expect. No shit. Look, we're using the subway to get people out of town. You win? Subway. Well, that's good thinking. When we get out, there's gonna be a lot to do. We could use a man of your skill set. What's wrong? Nothing. Just a, uh, just bad timing is all. Yeah. Look, um, don't worry about me. I'm gonna make other arrangements, okay? You better. You're the best gunsmith around. Oh no. <laughs> don't do anything stupid. Oh, that's, that's your job, right? Uh, take care, Jill. And poor Kendo. The story is so fucking tragic. If you're heading to the station, take that service alley out in front of the shop, okay? The key's hanging on the wall. All right, Pumpkin. It's all right. That's a good girl.
So with this segment done, we're going to carry our last grenade in our inventory, shotgun, handgun, make our fifth save. The reason we need a grenade is to get Nemesis to relinquish his final drop for more flame rounds. Tentacle zombie over here. We're gonna get rid of him immediately. By the way, with the barrel attachment, we get an additional two shotgun shells. So if we were running low on ammo before, we could actually combine those and uh, get a full uh, stock of six shotgun shells, which will be very useful to remember for the harder difficulties. Then we're going to take our lock pick and pick that box in the top, get three more explosive rounds. This is absolutely my favorite track in the game, by the way. It gives off, like, mad Deus Ex vibes. We're gonna let, uh... Nemi take care of the zombie over here. I had to do a perfect dodge in order to get around that. Well, two perfect dodges, actually. Because I wasn't going fast enough. You could try to zap him, but it doesn't really do a whole lot of good. Because he just stops there and just fires rockets. Jill, you okay? Carlos, that monster's on my ass again. Are you shitting me? I thought you killed it. Me too. The blast radius of these rockets is not terribly big, so really the only thing you have to worry about is a direct hit. Of which the hitbox on the rockets is pretty big. First aid spray right there in case you need it. By the way, this is a uh, story caution. Jill is limping, but that's just part of the story. Sometimes uh, Jill's animations will uh, change whenever she quote unquote takes damage from a cutscene. She'll just be like doing some extra limping. Jill, you there? I think I know how to slow that fucker down. Head back towards the station. And lead him right to you? It's okay. Trust me. Once so we get down the stairs here, we're going to climb up, and uh, then we got to go through a Crash Bandicoot sequence over here. This is insane. Come on, Jill. It's not the first time you've done that. Haven't you forgotten the adventures of Indiana Jill in RE1? Anyway, once that uh, pet is done moving, the nemesis will pop down. We throw a grenade and get him to drop down and relinqu relinquish his final supply case. This one contains flame rounds when we open it. A full stack of flame rounds. Come 
Get out of here. Carlos, I know we didn't get off to a great start, but thanks for the save. Hey, you saved my ass first. You're a hell of a lot braver than me. Well, what matters is that we can get everyone out of the city now. Yeah, hey, you'll be safe. What about you? Not from the sound of it. I won't be catching the train. Why not? No, there'll be new orders. If it means I can help save the city, it's fine by me. Good work. Your reputation is well deserved. Get inside. The subway's about to leave. Carlos, Tyrell, you have your orders. You need to go back out into the city and find Nathaniel Bart. This isn't the last ride out of town, right? Do not worry. Once the civilians are safe, the train will be back. It's all right. You're going ahead. But I'm not going to die on you and leave you in a cold, cruel, Carlosless world. Okay. You'll need to find this scientist. His vaccine research could save us all. You see? You're learning. The only life that matters is your own. Good luck. Let's go! You don't really think a pencil pusher like Barrett is still alive, do you? I have it on good authority. Bye. Are you worried about teammates? Or something else? Funny how brainless zombies can ambush a platoon like that. Funny the gate was locked. Don't you think? <laughs> It's not after you. <laughs> Nikolai! Get off my train. Shit, bird! Subway's got to be clear of the city by now. Along with your hot date? Nah, man, she's not like that. Hell, she's not like anybody. <clears throat> All right, keep your head screwed on, Romeo. This is the police station. Are you sure? It looks like a cemetery to me. Locked. 
You stay on the door. I got this fucker. Come get some. So eliminating Brad here will get him to drop his stars card. Also, it's pretty funny that uh, we fight zombified Brad in three instead of two. Open. These stars. That could be useful. So, um, I actually rather like that, uh, like the way that 3 and 2 were remade, they were both remade pretty much at once, since in a way they are kind of companion games Sorry, to each other. Boy. It's like 3 isn't really like, 3 isn't, 3 is, Somebody 3 has more content than is needed to simply be like a DLC. Like it has enough content to be like a standalone game, but I feel like playing both games just like sort of completes the experience of Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 3 Remake, so I'm actually quite happy that both of these were remade at the same time. So it does things to subvert your expectations, like that cop go? fighting Brad in RE3 Don't instead of RE2. We got a job to do. If our intel's still worth a damn, then Bard's in the Star's office. Let's find him and take him into custody. Custody? I thought this was a rescue. Carlos, take a look at this. I've located the Star's office. Remember, Bard had access to Umbrella's darkest secrets. He knows we'll try to keep him under our thumbs. So this search and rescue mission is really more like find and detain. Hmm. Right. Good to know. I'll open the shutter so you can get through. You stay here and find out what's been going on here at the station. I'll call you if I find anything. Hey! Be careful. Yeah. You too, man. So Brad Star's card opens up uh, different uh, ammo caches around the RPD. What the hell was that thing? Also, we get to see what the hell happened to these guys. Couldn't have been a zombie. Ah, uh, here we go. Just a lot of the uh, lore and backstory from RE2 is pretty nice. If that zombie is going to bust through the door. We can just like scoot right around him. T, you copy? There's something real nasty in here. I don't know what it is. Something nasty. All right. I'll take a look with the cameras. Watch your six. By the way, Carlos does not get a uh, dodge. He gets a uh, he gets a tackle or a punch instead. So whenever a zombie gets too close, you can actually uh, you can actually hit the space bar to tackle them and uh, push them back. And if they uh, if they attack during that, then Carlos will just haymaker them instead. After all these guys are down, we're just gonna slash these zombies. Try to slash them one at a time if we can. But uh, such is not always lucky. I was able to kill. Maybe not kill both of them at the same time, but. I was able to get both of them to raise at the same time here. So now we got the scope for the assault rifle. We're gonna put that on, and uh, the scope for the assault rifle 
will allow us to have 100% accuracy regardless of the uh, cone bloom. Cone bloom. Uh, the spread. The code to the locker here is the same as it is in Resident Evil 2 Remake. It's 9157. The solution to which can be found in the save room. For now, I am trying to absolutely make sure that all of the zombies kind of up cops. outside of the evidence locker are dead. Every single zombie has to die. Well, if cameras kill those things, I'd be set. In these lockers over here, there's some more uh, assault rifle ammo, a red herb if you need it. But of course the whole idea is to show how to beat the game without using any healing items for the achievement. Carlos, the star's office is up ahead. Copy that. We have to go all the way to the top floor where we would normally find the spade key. And instead, we're getting the uh, key to the evidence room. Rather, the evidence lockers. The codes to all these, uh, basically everything in here is exactly the same as in Resident Evil 2 Remake. DCM gets us more ammo. So after that guy's dead, we got to make sure that we are walking. We have to walk here because now there's a liquor. We're going to aim to the left. There's going to be a zombie here. We'll get rid of him. One hundred four, one hundred six, and one hundred nine. When we open those up, will get us the battery to the detonator. Mine now. Assault rifle ammo. Come the papa. And a hand grenade. The hand grenade we absolutely want because we need it to use against hunters later. We can ignore any other enemies up to this point. Carlos, I've hit a dead end with the terminal here. Gotta head your way. Copy that. Then we'll hit CAP here in order to grab a flash grenade. Gotta ration out those grenades. Also, we got a note on the bench from our boy in that locker in there, who we saw in Resident Evil 2 Remake. So after we blow down the wall, 
you were wondering how that wall got blown down in RE2, now you know. It wasn't Nemesis, it was Carlos. Got to try to go for headshots on these guys. Only go for center mass if they're getting too close and you have to panic fire in order to get them off of you. Just be gentle. Exhibit some trigger discipline. Don't hold the fire button down. After these guys are all down, we're going to poke them with the knife. It's actually recommended to use the handgun to finish zombies off. At least for me, because you will uh, save ammo for a section later on in the game where there's going to be a lot of zombies that you have to kill. You'll know it when we get to it. So with all these guys down, they always go down after a second uh, after a second phase of getting up and going down. I also like to check them one more time. It's very rare that there's a zombie that goes down a third phase. Also, this zombie's got his legs sticking through the door, so I want to poke him too. The slicker's going to drop down here. We can uh, open the chest here. It's usually gonna be a, or open the box here. It's usually gonna be a green herb. I'm gonna walk this way and the liquor will come in our direction. He behaves exactly as he does in RET Remake. If you get close enough, he can smell you. Then he'll try to come towards you. Then you can just walk around him and uh, be done with it. Dr. Bard. Oh, thank God. Do you know how long I've been trying to reach somebody? Don't worry, we're gonna get you out of there. Just tell me where you are. I'm trapped in a goddamn hospital, surrounded by every kind of abomination. Look, just send in stars. They're gonna know what to do. No, negative. RPD's overrun too. Then figure it out! Umbrella's gone crazy. They're killing all the researchers. I am the only one who knows how to make the vaccine to stop the zombies. So you can either sit there with your dick in your hand or send, send somebody who's capable of getting me the hell out of here. I like him already. Yeah, you would. You heard what he said. And we can't turn him over to the company. Well, that's not our call to make. That's Mihail's call. I'm going to check the computer, see if I can trace the doc's location. This will take some time. Look around, see if you can find anything useful. <laughs> that fucking liquor. Okay. So we got another flash grenade here. Uh, when we open the chest over here with Brad's ID card, this will be the final use of Brad's ID card. We'll get some more assault rifle ammo. And then, yeah, that's it. Is that Jill in the front row? Just wanted to do a quick once over to make sure that I had everything. Yeah, what's up? 
Was anyone hurt? Jill? Ah, oh, shit. Wait, what? Jill! Jill, what happened? Jill, come in! T, I gotta go. Do what you gotta. I'll take care of Bart. There's no other items in here, by the way. Am I the only one who made it? No. No. Carlos? Come in. Carlos? Oh, damn it. I guess I'm out of range. So upon reaching the save room here, we got two packs of mine thrower rounds. We only need like four for the upcoming fight anyway. We'll pick up all of our mine thrower rounds, our grenades, just 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 all of our grenades. Just pump them into our inventory. Put away the lockpick. To just uh, leave room for picking up more ammo. Then we'll load up flame rounds and make our seventh save here. right on by these guys and capitate the zombies up here. We're never going back there anyway. The still alive. I can't stay here. The only items here are a file and a couple of healing items. Respond. Yeah, what's up? We didn't make it. The train derailed. Derailed? Was anyone hurt? No, everybody's dead. Mihail, everybody. Oh, shit. Nikolai left us to die. Wait, what? What the fuck? It's bad! Jill! Jill, what happened? So when the fight starts, we uh, hit him with a flame round immediately, and then we're going to lure him around in a circle. Nemesis Type 2 will uh, take hits done on just about every flame round. And after about six flame rounds, he will initiate a phase change. The aggravated damage from the flame rounds will eventually put him into this phase as well. 
Okay, yeah, it's taking a lot more than I had anticipated. But in general, just don't try to go for the perfect dodge. Just try to just try to dodge and try to shoot. If you get a perfect dodge, good deal. But luring him around this roundabout here in a circle will actually be ideal towards avoiding damage from him. Just stay as tight to the circle as you can. Whenever he roars like that, that's when he's uh, going into his next phase and he's going to be uh, jumping around everywhere. On hardcore mode, we have a little bit of extra time to shoot him. On the harder difficulties, we will not, so take this time to study how he works. Especially the path that he takes running around here like that. Got all the way up there. We hit him. He's falling down. And then we shoot the parasite. So now he's going to chase us around a little more. Maybe about uh, one or two attacks or so. And then he'll be running around the arena again. And while he's still running around, we're going to use this opportunity to grab things. He'll go like about two, three laps before he decides on somewhere to attack us. And when he does that, we're just going to stop and shoot him. And Parasite, boom, 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 boom. And just keep repeating that cycle. So yeah, as you can see the cycle, yeah, he's like slam, slam, slam. That means he's on his last legs. So he's gonna chase us around a little bit. And he's even got like a new attack where he just like jumps, does a little twirl and then falls. But once he uh, stops following you around in a tight circle, that's when he's about to run around the arena again. And there he goes. A third attack, apparently. Now watch out, he can, up he can attack for four, sometimes five times. But you can wind down his timer a little faster by shooting him after every one of his attacks. Then he'll return to this part of the cycle. Somehow I missed that mine, but wait for it. I hit him there, he goes boom, and then on the way down, boom! Tell me that wasn't sick as shit. Still trying to get used to the uh, layout of the arena here a little bit, so got to run around and collect the last of the mine rounds before we leave. There's a couple of cars that uh, Nemesis will not land on, so we got to check like after the fight. The main one being that police car right there, but six mine rounds is a lot. It's good for the second to last boss fight.
interest. You've done me a big favor, Miss. Jill! Hey, answer me. God damn it. Tyrell, do you copy? What's going on? Jill's been infected. I... I'm taking her to the hospital. Maybe Dr. Bard can save her. All right, I'll meet you there. You hang in there, super cop. I got you. Find it, Jill. I'm gonna get you the vaccine. You're gonna be okay. I promise. So after that fight... Tyrell, where's Bard now? Gotta be the lab in the back. Stay frosty, I'm on my way. Copy. I'll go on ahead. We got two boxes of assault rifle ammo, one in the room with Jill, the other on the desk there. I've got time for this! Because we got plenty of handgun rounds, we're going to mop up all of these zombies. There's five zombies in here on hardcore mode. And we can uh, shoot every single one of them. Raise them, kill them. It's actually for the best that we do. Because it's better that they stay dead so that when we come back through here as Jill later, Jill doesn't have to worry about them. Again, I'm also using the handgun because I want to prioritize saving all of my assault rifle ammo for the end of the Carlos segment. There's going to be an RE4 type siege style section. Saving my ammo for that particular section especially with the crazy number of zombies. Of it's kind of necessary. Please state your business clearly into the intercom. Dr. Bard, are you in there? I'm here to rescue you. Open the door. No voice match found. Voice match? What kind of sci-fi bullshit is this? So, you're probably wondering, why are the zombies not walking over to you, Carsey? And that's because I'm technically still in the previous room, and the zombie's tether is at the end of the door. Taking advantage of that is pretty handy. Because you can see old Dr. Barbara Streisand over here is just moving over that way. If their bodies are still twitching when you shoot them, it means they're still alive. I'm trying to get all my damage out via the handgun. Switch only 
to the assault rifle when we've run out of handgun ammo. Trying to poke everything. After coming out of this room, we can make our way upstairs. Go ahead and get rid of that Dr. Zombie sitting there. You know, it's funny. They say that no smoking is allowed on the hospital on the hospital grounds under any circumstances, but there's a smoking terrace right there. We're gonna jump out this first window to the right, and that is not a red herb, that is a tactical grip. So Carlos's assault rifle is almost complete. Then we jump over to pick up the key and then unlock this door. We had to access the second floor and jump out that window in order to be able to progress the second floor. So now that we've done that, we're headed back upstairs. Now I've equipped flash grenades here in order to ready myself up for the next enemy. We're going to open this door and in the lockers there's going to be another flash grenade and an ID card. So the grenades here, we want to save the grenades specifically for hunters. Any hunter we can't cheese, we use a grenade for it. here. And with hunters, you want to try to shoot for their head as much as possible. If they get too close, obviously we'll use a haymaker, but we want to expose their brains so we can get rid of them. Because I don't have Carlos's extended mag yet, and I should have absolutely picked it up before we came in here. Jesus Christ! Got to manually reload and bait them around. Now, if I had his extended mag, then I could have just gone into the inventory and loaded up the, the extended mag as soon as I ran out of ammo and just mag dumped him and been done with it. But that's how much time you lose when you are forced to reload. Compulsive reloading is your friend sometimes. But not when you have to mag dump. So, clockwise 9, counterclockwise 3. There's our extended mag. Gotta take it nice and easy. Just let the zombies come to you little by little. And then when we reach zero on the ammo counter, Combine the dual magazine, and boom, replenishes for free. So you get a free 64 assault rifle bullets. So make sure that your mag is empty before you upgrade to the double mag. Stabbing on the ground to make sure that none of them are twitching, none of them are going to get up. There's some assault rifle ammo there. There's a green herb over there, but we don't need that. So we're just going to let that zombie 
go to sleep, stay asleep. In the treatment room are not just one, but two hunters. Hunters are probably the most lethal standard enemy in the game, just simply because they're tanky, they're fast, and the options to set them up for quick kills are very limited. This is one such example. Get their aggro, and then when they group up on the door after you open it, toss a grenade, they should both be at about 25% HP. At which point, we just shoot them because it takes about like 10 bullets to kill them after that. Actually, it kind of drops them down to like an eighth of their HP now that I think about it. But that's if you, uh, that's if you aren't going for like weak spots or anything. I think the grenades just do like a direct HP reduction and ignore defense which is why they're so strong against hunters. Some more assault rifle ammo there, and then we'll jump out of this far left window and then make our way over to Dr. Bard's office. But not before we hit up the operating room since we've got our ID card. Again, trying to ration out our hand grenades. There's... Plenty of uh, assault rifle ammo here, handgun ammo, two hand grenades and a flash grenade. And the two hand grenades are going to be absolutely necessary to use in the siege segment at the end of the Carlos segment. The siege section at the end of the Carlos segment. Getting rid of these guys so that Jill doesn't have to deal with them later. We want things to be pretty easy going with Jill. Still got handgun bullets, so... While mopping them up, use handgun bullets. I try to poke two to three times just to make sure, but... They only get up twice generally. I haven't seen them get up a third time yet. I feel like they got up a third time a lot of times in Resident Evil 2 Remake, which is why I kept uh, checking to see if they were still alive in RE3. Because zombies are pretty tanky in Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. All I wanted to know was what the documents were doing in your office in the first place. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm goddamn Nathaniel Bard. I'm the best biologist you'll ever meet, you bedpan-changing waste of a nursing degree. Of course I have connections higher up. Of course the military consults with me on projects beyond your comprehension. So stop wasting my time with your nosy questions. I... Uh, I'm sorry, Doctor. You didn't read the documents, did you? No, I shredded them just like you asked. Good. Good. If that's all, you can go back to wiping your patient's ass. That's what they pay you for, right? And polish my shoes. Yes, sir. I bet you know a lot about polishing, don't you? Now fuck off and don't say a word to anyone. Wow. What a douche. That's our Carlos. Bard. Tyrell. Bard's dead. He's been shot. Shit. And the vaccine? I'm looking. Well, look harder. There's gotta be a computer, right? This is VRC Chief Nathaniel Bard. September 29, 11 p.m. I am acutely aware that my time's running out. And I hope and pray, by making this recording and bringing the truth to light, that I can restore some small shred of honor to my name. All of Raccoon City's suffering began with the 
release of a biological weapon known as the T-Virus. My employer, the Umbrella Corporation, engineered this virus. And they ordered my team to develop a vaccine, which we did. Now, I keep samples of this vaccine here in my office. The rest of it is stored underground. But those sons of bitches at the board, they want to destroy it. They don't want the world to know what they've done. So they're trying to erase all evidence that the virus ever existed. No, I'm not a fool. I know they don't want me to... She only went along. And she trusted me anyway. Fuck! Is it here? All right, Joe. Hang tight. T, I got it. Be careful. Careful? <laughs> Have you seen this town? It'll be a fucking miracle if I get there in one piece. On the way out, we gotta make sure that we equip a flash grenade here. Because the hunter is gonna bust in through the skylight. So we wanna stun him in place. Because if we don't, he's going to beat us to the door and attack us, possibly much worse. That zombie got up. I didn't take him out earlier. I actually could have taken him out earlier. On hardcore, you absolutely can take him out. Then we're going to make our way back to Jill. You're going to be okay, Jill. Tyrell, what the hell happened? Attention all citizens. The contagion spreading throughout the city has been designated uncontainable. On October 1st, Raccoon City will be completely destroyed in a missile strike. All residents capable of rational thought are urged to evacuate immediately. This is not a test. Attention all citizens. I mean, that's only a day away. There's still people in the city. You think Uncle Sam gives a shit? Fuck, here they come. Oh, you sit tight. I got this. Better grab some gear. Sounds like there's a lot of them out there. Gonna make another save before the siege section here. We're already pretty well equipped. I'm gonna try to lower the window shutters. The less entry points, the better. And how do we do that? I'll try hacking into the hospital security system. Keep them off me in the meantime. Okay, now the fun shit begins. So while the zombies are busting through, we're going to pick up as much as we can. We're going to prioritize, uh... We're going to prioritize assault rifle ammunition. It takes about seven shots to down a zombie. 
I think most of the zombies have like the same amount of HP, roughly. Sometimes critical hits will make that fewer bullets, of course. But we can't bank on that, so we're just going to say like seven shots each. Because there's like not that many zombies at the start, it is perfectly fine to just use the handgun to mop these guys up. But we have to get ready to equip a grenade when the lights go out, because a hunter will bust out of the double doors behind us. We have to deal with two hunters here as well. By the way, I should mention, this is a great place to get all of the enemy extermination achievements. Maybe not so much for uh, the weapon-specific kill achievements, but for getting like, the one zombie sphere where you have to kill 2,000 enemies, this is a very easy place to get it. But yeah, to that end, try to make sure that uh, you have a grenade equipped. For the uh, for the hunter, like so. Oh, come on. I try to stay kind of close to the door so that the hunter busts out like almost instantly. Kind of need him to. I was pretty unlucky there to have the hunter just keep chasing me around like that. Also got to watch out for this guy because he spawns a nemesis parasite. Thought it was a little excessive that there were so many enemies that just spawn nemesis parasites when there's no nemesis to be seen. There's another side pack in there as well. So zombies, while they're crawling in through the window, you can drop their HP down to one, but you can't actually kill them until they're actually completely flopped on the ground, like on their backs. So if you don't have any other way to spend your downtime, spend it reducing zombie HP. so you can worry a little more about the nemesis parasite zombies and the next hunter that's going to spawn in at the window next to the double doors on Carlos's subjective right. Ah, uh, but see, you also got to pay attention to that window on the far right. When the shutters are about halfway down, the hunter is going to drop in, ninja style. We're going to equip that hand grenade. We got the HP reduction on the spot. Got to try to mop up the zombies while the shutter is still going down. Once it gets down to about a fourth of a window, the zombies will no longer be spawning in, so just try to mop up the last of them. Ready your flash grenades, because there are no more hunters, no more need for regular grenades. Red light. We're gonna use the detonator, it takes 30 seconds to get a little bit of extra ammo too. And green light. Red light.
Not even close. But at least it's over. I'm coming back. Vaccine's a real deal. Good. You going somewhere? You're damn right. What do you think you're gonna do? Whole city's about to be microwaved. Come on, man. Call the government. Tell them we found a cure. You stall for time. Ballsy motherfucker. Good news. It's over now. The city's safe. All citizens, the missile strike on Raccoon City will occur in just hours. The payload is designed to eradicate all biological material. You will not survive if you remain in the city. October 1st. Evacuate now. Repeat. No. Evacuate it can't now. Be. This is not a test. Morning, sunshine. You saved my life. I sure as shit didn't. That was all Carlos. He carried you here and he treated you himself. Crazy bastard. Where is he? He went underground. Bard stockpiled the vaccine, enough to give this city some hope. He thinks he can do this by himself. I'm going after him. Wait, did you see the broadcast? They're gonna blow the city sky high. I'm trying to get a hold of someone, anyone with the clearance to stop it. Leave this mess to him. He's a professional. So am I. Right. Guess I'm not talking you out of this. The storage facility is underground beneath this hospital. I've lost contact with Carlos, so expect trouble. Upon regaining control of Jill, we get a burst handgun, and we can put away the old handgun. There's actually no need to carry the old handgun anymore. We put our lockpick back in the inventory, put away the uh, every other grenade besides the uh, explosive rounds. Just keep the grenade launcher in our inventory. We actually do need the grenade launcher coming up in a little bit because we're gonna be using some acid rounds against some hunters. Generally, acid rounds are a little more difficult to come again, to come up, or to, uh, are a little more difficult to turn up with. But I haven't really tried using acid rounds on a lot of the enemies in this game. I reckon that'll take about two, three more playthroughs to actually, like, fully experiment with all those, but... Acid rounds do stun hunter, do stun hunter betas long enough for you to finish them off with the shotgun. Oh, this must be the way in front. We're gonna use the lockpick, go into the quote-unquote forbidden door as it is mentioned in a file. So I guess I could talk a little bit more about uh, criticisms of this game. I don't mind the game's length at all, because length is not the same thing as whether a game has content or not. 
and my main criticism is that a lot of content in the game was cut. But not the areas that were present as set pieces in older Resident Evil or in classic Resident Evil 3. I'm talking specifically about live selections and branching scenario paths. The game is pretty linear as a result. There's a great retelling of the story and actually fleshes out a lot of things that the classic Resident Evil 3 story did not really touch upon, but uh, was present in the original scenario, and then they added the Bard subplot to the remake. Explosive B is next to Bard. We'll combine the two explosive Bs in order to get acid rounds. The best way to use acid rounds on hunters is to do it just as they are attacking. Because if you do it uh, any earlier, then hunters will generally duck under your grenades. They'll do like a little wave dashy thing where they duck under your grenades. They're pretty annoying like that. But that being said, with the uh, criticisms that I just mentioned, I mean, I find myself thoroughly enjoying this game. Uh, it's got some questionable balancing, especially on like the much harder difficulties, but... I guess the uh, meme difficulties are kind of there to add just enough for playability, possibly notoriety to the challenge factor, which, you know, I can, I can, I can agree with. We'll come to unlock the uh, locker over here. Get the shotgun shells. Just get around these zombies and move right on. Uh, down the uh, hallway over here, there's going to be a hunter. And we're going to beat the hunter to the door. Just try not to engage the hunter at all. Just whatsoever. We'll go into this room here. There's going to be a high-grade gunpowder. Walk around the desk and head into the treatment room where there's going to be a padlock and also an explosive A. There's going to be no enemies in here either, but uh, we don't want to exit through the linen room into the hallway because then we'd have to get past that hunter that we just ran right by earlier. The idea is to avoid the hunter, so we're going to take the long way around, exit through the double doors, and head directly to our right since Jill can squeeze right through there. I think I can squeeze by and is consequently able to pick up the Magnum after jumping out this window. I guess this uh, UBCS guy got grievously injured and just sort of died in a corner here. Guaranteed to give you a headache. So after we unlocked that uh, padlock in the locker upstairs next to the treatment room in the linen room, we used the lockpick for the last time, and now we can ditch it, and now we have the Magnum. For all of our trouble exploring everything. Gotta keep ready with the acid rounds. There's another hunter about to show up. I tried to, uh... Get him to bust down the door so that I can hit him in the face with an acid round, but Hunters are Hunters tracking is a little bit bugged. I'm not sure if this is because I'm playing the game at a high frame rate, or if it's because the hunters are uh just have bug tracking. I'm not entirely sure. 
Keep in mind, this is an early build of the game. Well, not an early build of the game, but like a pre-release build of the game, so things could have changed with the 1.1 patch, which happened before the game actually released. By the way, in case you were wondering about my specs, I'm actually playing this game on a Core i9 9900K with an RTX 2080 Super at 1440p. I don't even know why I'm doing this. I shouldn't even be doing this. It's such a waste of time. Also, that's not like a weird flex, by the way. Like, people are actually genuinely curious, like, why my frame rate counter in the top left is so high. I always keep my frame rate just there, just to, like, see whether or not something I do and is affected by frame rate. I actually got really lucky with this hunter. I intended to pull out my grenade launcher and kill him with the acid rounds, but I got the two shots with the shotgun, which you can only get if you pop him in the face. Like, just full, straight-up buckshot right in the face, like, just dead center. That's about the only way you can actually do it. Otherwise, you have to pop the hunters with the grenades and set them up to kill some other, ha some other way. Now that we're done with that... Oh, shoot. Hey, there's a Mr. Everywhere doll. At the time of the recording, recording, I hadn't gotten all of them yet. I'm still missing two. I actually completely missed an explosive powder next to that ledge, but there's an, uh, there's an explosive powder A. I must admit, I respect your tenacity. There's an achievement our games in, the in this room this okay. for clearing it in under five minutes. first fuse is at the top of this first lift. After this explosion over here, there's going to be a dog, and we'll kill both of these dogs with shotgun shells.
Let's squeeze between these uh, shelves over here. Head up the stairs. Onto the top of the lift. We don't want to lower the lift just yet because we have to go back here to raise this lift. There's another high-grade gunpowder over here. At uh, this stage in the game, we actually want to start using our high-grade gunpowders to mix magnum rounds. We don't want to be mixing any more uh, shotgun shells because the game will just give us shotgun shells in droves at this point. After we get the uh, fuse, we're just going to run around these guys. There's no need to go into either of these containers. The trade-off is not worth it. I mean, I don't know, it probably is. I found I was at quite an abundance of flame rounds when I was at the end of this playthrough, so uh, it could be. After that, we're going to lower the elevator and step off on this side. There's going to be a shell rack for the shotgun. That's the final upgrade for the shotgun. Weapon upgrade 9 out of 10. And the final upgrade will be immediately after this warehouse section. Gotta try to go for their heads. The pale heads, rather. Pale heads are, uh... Zombies that you may or may not remember from um, Resident Evil The Ghost Survivors, or sorry, RE2's Ghost Survivors DLC. When this hunter is finished like Daffy ducking off the box, we're just gonna we're just gonna hit him with acid rounds and just finish him off. But uh, yeah, we uh, we tag that hunter. I just call it Daffy Ducking because he's just bouncing off the walls everywhere. There's an explosive powder A over there. Don't forget it. Don't be like me. Don't forget the explosive powder. And don't use the magnum here. Save your magnum rounds. This was a bad idea. Past Carsey. You should have saved the magnum for the final boss. What were you doing? I take it back. Past Carsey's a fucking shit pile. Damn it, Past Carsey. Shit. He got away. What was he doing in here? By the way, in that box was the final upgrade. You get it for the Magnum. Joe. Tyrell. I got through. They're willing to negotiate. Ah. They'll call off the strike if, and this is one big ass if, we can deliver the vaccine to them before they launch. How long do we have? Hours, maybe. Then let's not waste one more second. This way. We'll find the vaccine up ahead. Need to stop? Stop and do what? I got your back. All right, let's get this done. No! No! 
man, poor Tyrell, though. He was the real MVP. I actually like that they made him one of the good guys instead of one of the bad guys in our E3 remake. Gave us all a buddy. So on hardcore difficulty, you actually want to save uh, 12 magnum rounds for the final boss. So keep that in mind. Override key successfully generated. What have we here? Override key removed. We're not going to head down the hallway to the right because doing so will spawn zombies. We don't want to do that. Override complete. The pale heads will go down in one magnum shot or two really close range shotgun shells. Actually, they take a lot more shotgun shells on Hardcore. On Nightmare, it's like these guys are more numerous, but they have less HP. Just grab the cart, grab the uh, culture sample, and just go. The zombies will not follow you out. fast but a single focus shot magnum round is enough to take them out case upstairs there were some acid rounds those acid rounds will come in handy against the last mob of hunters coming up Another explosive B, we'll just combine those to get uh, more grenade rounds, or flame rounds rather. I think I went a little overboard with the flame rounds, thinking that they would be most effective against Nemesis, when really it's just regular explosive rounds that would have been best against Nemesis. No, past Carsey, stop! Past Carsey, please! Man, just knowing exactly how bad the final boss is 
I just like I just like can't do that fight with anything less than Magnum rounds now. At least it wasn't that bad because you only need twelve on hardcore as opposed to like eighteen on like the later difficulty levels. I know too much now. So now we gotta deal with three hunters. One and two, don't fire yet. Just head back in that direction. And then when that one's about to attack, we're just gonna splash them both with acid. Man, if it wasn't for that perfect dodge there, I would've screwed myself. probably shot them too many times. I think maybe one or two shotgun shells after an acid round would have been enough because the acid will still continue to do aggravated damage. Yeah, you know, I should probably consider maybe a different ammo mixing route in the future. If I had fewer flame rounds, I definitely could have mixed a lot more acid and explosive rounds. And explosive rounds are generally stronger against most forms of nemesis, so maybe consider that in the future. To begin vaccine synthesis, place the materials in the chamber. So to set up for the final fight here, I mixed up the uh, high-grade gunpowder to get just a little bit more magnum rounds. I didn't uh, really discover until I was recording the last segment that the magnum was super good against Final Nemesis. But otherwise, uh, explosive rounds and mine rounds are actually the way to go. First phase, you can use flame rounds and be perfectly fine, though. 
other than that, we want uh, handguns, no magnum. Take the shotgun and some shells. And the grenade launcher. I do. Hmm. I don't think the wisdom I've been trying to impart on you is getting true. Now I know you can't put a price on life. But I'm in this business to get paid. So let's make a deal. You go down there, battle the nemesis, and I'll record it all and sell the combat art. Put on a good show, and maybe I don't need the vaccine. Agreed? Good! So for the opening phase here, we're gonna try to tech him out of attacking. When he gets up on his hind legs like that, it'll generally uh, knock him flat on his ass whenever we use a flame round. But uh, flame rounds actually don't have quite as much stun as the explosive rounds and the mind rounds. I think those also do a little bit more damage than the flame rounds overall. Man, I got really lucky there. I'm surprised that there wasn't even a that that slam didn't cause any direct damage to me as well. Jill, is that you? Carlos? You're okay. Let me spot for you. Good idea. Jill tries to swat away the fire like that, that actually doesn't cause any damage. It's only, uh... It's only Nemesis on the, uh, top of the building that actually causes any damage because of his flamethrower. It actually causes aggravated damage to Jill. But anyway, uh, once we obey Carlos and zap Nemesis, we always follow up with another grenade. Man, I made a huge mistake using flame rounds here. But in general, you can lay into Nemesis with uh, grenades and be pretty okay. Burst fire handgun is really good for that. Shooting those panels. He slams down three times like that, he's initiating another phase change. And uh, the next time he runs a lap around, he's actually going to try to leap on top of you instead of hide behind a canister. Or a tank, rather. It wasn't a no shit moment for me, that one, because I already knew it was going to curve around. Actually, no, I was wrong, because that's when he's going to jump up on uh, I got this. the tank over there again. 
ball is going to get melt a little bit. And you have to do that one more time. Carlos has to hit him one more time in order for the fight to end. But we can still keep reducing his HP. I don't have an SRT, but as far as I'm aware, that is how Nemesis appears to work. Is the final hit always has to be delivered by Carlos. But you can see explosive rounds are actually doing hit stun with every shot. I was able to sidestep that quite nicely. I got lucky twice in this fight. Because this fight is actually pretty horrible. Carlos is going to hit him one more time. Actually, no, Carlos doesn't deliver the final hit. What happens is Nemesis falls and then he's gonna get back up. Well, okay, I guess Carlos does deliver the final hit. Here comes a crane. To use it to climb up. Back. Yeah, sorry, I've been kind of flip-flopping. I'm still trying to figure out how these bosses work. The game's only been out for a... I've only had the game for a week. The game isn't even out yet at the time I'm recording this commentary. You greedy son of a bitch. No, 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 no. You print money. I like money. We shall make ours an ongoing arrangement. Now drop the gun! This would be worth millions. But, well, uh, you know how it is. City's about to explode, and you can't put a price on life. <laughs> Good luck! Nikolai! Jill! Go after Nikolai. He's got the vaccine. What about you? We're running out of time. I've got this. I know you do. Look, just so you know, this is the last fucking time. So for final nemesis, what we gotta do is we gotta turn around and we got to activate the railgun. Gonna queue up our burst handgun. Then we're gonna fire the first railgun shot. Damn, it needs power. 
So here's the deal. Nemesis is going to have a bunch of uh, polyps that pop up, and they're going to twitch before you can fire at them. They're gonna, just going to do a little jiggle, and when they do that, that's when you can actually start firing at them. And they'll burst. So the first phase isn't that bad because it's only three, and Nemesis is also going quite slow. Uh, while he is down, we are able to push a battery, and if we try to push the batteries while he is still up, then he will grab us and he will kill us. After the first phase is when I equip the Magnum. If we get any perfect dodges, they allow us to take out a polyp pretty much immediately. walking through the acid, but it's not like doing any damage to me directly. You think I don't know how to fuck you up? <laughs> I fucking love that line. Okay, so it jiggled again, and as soon as Nemesis winds up for his first attack, we're gonna try to... bang him out on all of his polyps, and uh, after that, after we push this last battery, that's it. We've, we're done. We've beaten the game. All we have to do is just go back to the rail cannon and fire. By the way, there is a very easy to miss file at the top of this ladder, right next to the door. Watch out for it. It actually gives like a lot of exposition to Nikolai. going to stop. Promised you this, didn't I? No! Do you have any idea what you've just done? No, oh, no. Don't care. My client ordered me to reduce umbrella to rub. Ten minutes until missile ah. impact. The missile has launched. And that is my cue. Goodbye, Miss Valentine. Shame you didn't listen to me when you had the chance. Shoot anywhere. Carlos! Hey, I told you I couldn't leave you in a Carlos's world. That would just be too cruel. What about him? 
Why'd you do it? There's a price tag for everything. Even letting the world burn. <laughs> Who are you working for? I'll tell you, if you get me out of here. I'll pay you whatever you want. You're a fool. You're a fool! If I die, you'll never find out the truth. I don't mind a little detective work. over. So long, Arcee. I felt empty and cold as the heat from the blast washed over us. All this death wasn't caused by a monster-making virus. It was greed. Human greed. I decided then and there, the ashes of Raccoon City would be Umbrella's ashes too. I would end them, once and for all.